I'm Allie, you're in disaster class. Let's react to some Reddit posts. Here's our first one. Boyfriend, 29 male, and I, 26 female, discussed the future and I told him my expectations for having children and now he's pissed. This conversation happened a week ago and he is still cold to me. We had Sunday dinner with his family and his mother mentioned how different parenting is these days compared to when she raised her children and when her mother raised her. This makes me think that he complained to her about what we discussed. I need someone to tell if I am out of control or if I'm being a brat or if I need a reality check. I don't know if Reddit is the best place for this, but I feel less humiliated if internet strangers told me I was being an A rather than the people in my life. About a week ago, we had a date at home. BF made dinner and it was super lovey-dovey. Naturally, we started talking about our relationship and what our future holds together. We talked about getting engaged in the next year or so and planning our wedding. We talked about kids. This is where the conversation went sideways. At the start of our relationship, we were both on the fence about having kids, leaning more toward being child-free and living out our lives as the cool aunt and uncle. We were both 100% on the same page. Eight months ago, BF's sister and her husband had twins, and it is so amazing. I love seeing him interact with them. He is always excited to see them and babysits on his own often. He has mentioned that he is still on the fence about having children, but is leaning more toward wanting one or two instead of not having any at all. I am 100% okay with this. I have always wanted to be a mother when I was little and people asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I told them I was going to be a mom. However, I am the oldest child in my family and have five younger siblings with a decent age gap in the middle. My youngest sibling is still in elementary school. I was my mother's right hand growing up. Family joked that I was mom number two. I hated it, but my mother was overworked. She was a nurse, and my father worked two jobs and they needed help. I never really left childcare, and I became a nanny after high school. I'm still a nanny while I attend online university, so I would argue that I'm very, very familiar with child rearing and the heart. Toot toot to you, sir. I don't like it. So I would argue that I'm very, very familiar with child rearing and the hardships of being a primary parent. I know that parenting is a lot harder. So even though I have always wanted kids, I learned early on that I had requirements for what I needed in my life before even considering bringing children into the world. I shared this with my boyfriend and he flipped out, which is really unlike him. I told him that I wasn't even going to consider having kids unless we both understood how serious it was to actually have them. This isn't a milestone people have to reach. These are real people that need to be raised. Kids are annoying. They are a handful. It can be so rewarding, but it's not easy all of the time. I need him to be an equal partner in raising any potential kids we have and managing our household. Obviously, just like in relationships, there will be times when the partnership looks more like a 70-30 or even a 90-10, and that is okay. But at the end of the day, it's a shared responsibility. I also said that this was a big one for me after being a nanny for many postpartum mothers. I want to stay home with the kids until they are ready to go to school, whether that means pre-K or kindergarten. I pref- We went over this. Toot toot. A few moments later. Please don't hug again. I'm trying so hard to pay attention. It's so hard for me to pay attention. I would prefer to stay home so that I can take as much time to recover as I need after childbirth and so I can have a big hand in raising them during the formative years. Early childhood is so important, and I know that if I was a parent, I would want to be as involved as possible. Obviously, if a miracle happened and I became a parent with the higher income and BF wanted to stay home, that would be great too. I would want to go back to work after they were ready to go to school. I just don't want to outsource childcare. We are both on the same page in understanding how mothers tend to take on more of the mental load in parenthood, on top of the physical, social, and career sacrifices they make. But he did not like what I said at all. He told me I was too stubborn and asked how I came up with rules like this, and that I was basically telling him it was my way or the highway. He said I was being a brat and essentially stomping my foot and telling him that unless I get everything I want, then he is not allowed to want a family with me. He questioned why I wouldn't be okay with hiring a nanny or a babysitter when I was a professional nanny. He felt like he was going to have to jump through hoops in order to be a father. Then he accused me of sneakily trying to force him into making me a stay-at-home wife while he busts his head work. 
I didn't take any of this well at all. I told him it sounded like he was trying to check kids off his bucket list just because he had a few good dates with his sister's babies. He went to bed right after and wouldn't speak to me when I tried to talk to him before bed. He's been cold ever since and we aren't speaking, though I'm trying to talk to him. I want to talk about it and see where he's coming from and to see if I was way out of line, but he will barely look at me. I'm rethinking the past two years together, but I need to know if I was out of line before I confront him again and ask him to talk to me. Yeah, there's a lot of that on this platform where it's like, I'm being reasonable and communicating my expectations and people are flipping out and am I in the wrong? And like, usually the answer is no. Like, here's what I like about what OP did. OP did a thing that most people don't do. They don't think to do. It seems so simple in retrospect, but she thought about what would make her happy and she communicated that to her partner wild i know sounds like witchcraft for some reason you did exactly what you were supposed to do in my opinion op so no like you are not out of line op is approaching the situation like there's like things that i want and i think this is how i'm gonna get to where i want to be her partner's like i'm in my feelings about this thing and if your feelings are not aligned with my feelings that's somehow an attack on my feelings and now I have to get defensive over all the feelings that I'm having. It speaks volumes that when OP is communicating her dreams and what would make her happy that her partner shuts down and shuts down to the point where it sounds like he's giving her the silent treatment. Giving someone the silent treatment and taking space when you're frustrated are different things. So silent treatment is pretending that someone does not exist and taking space to cool down is being like, hey, I'm in my feelings about this. I need to cool off. Let's put this on ice. Um, and then they like take a walk or something and come back. The two main differences are one, you're telling them what you're doing. Like you're telling them that you're taking space to cool off. And the other thing is that it's not to punish them um, when you take space to cool off. It's something that you're doing for you to so that you can be a present and empathetic partner. They're both pretty young. They're both in their 20s. There's definitely, I think, a maturity issue. When you have kids, you don't have less conflict with your partner. If anything, like the stakes are higher and there's more stress and there's less sleep and there's and there's like less alone time and there's less time to like cool off. And so um, if this is if like the stakes are pretty low right now and you're seeing a lot of immature behavior from your partner, that should be concerning to you. Not necessarily like you have to dump him right away, but like take a mental note because your life with kids, with this person who acts like this, it's like that times 10 when you have kids is my guess. One commenter says, I remember having to basically say to my husband, I would refuse to have children whilst we were in debt and unable to save. We had income, he was just hopeless with it, but we had no responsibilities. He was kind of annoyed about it, basically feeling like I was making ultimatums. But I'd grown up without money. I couldn't be irresponsible with opportunities we could provide that my parents couldn't. So he carried on until I then had to lay out that if he couldn't meet that standard, I couldn't continue in a partnership that wasn't based on us both agreeing to shared goals. I wasn't going to put my life on hold waiting for him to decide the money was important, nor keep him from having kids the way he wanted with someone who is happy with the lack of financial responsibility. He pretty much changed overnight. As with most posts here, state your boundaries and standards clearly. He'll either take them into account or he won't. If he doesn't meet them, then leave. Someone will, and you won't then be choosing between your goals and happiness. I love that this commenter brought up goals, because that's another thing that people like for some reason just won't talk about in relationships. Like, it's really important that you talk about these uncomfortable things, preferably sooner rather than later, so that it doesn't catch you off guard after you're already married and it's like, what? We're bankrupt. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> Another commenter says, so let me get this straight. You have experience raising kids and have identified the parameters within which you'd elect to have kids. And he threw a fit because your realistic and caring approach sounds like too much work for him. You don't say. I think a lot of men have a fantasy idea of having kids where they just play ball in the backyard or coach the t-ball team. 
they don't think about all the things we do as women. You articulated much of it as well. Left out loss of lifetime earning potential, impacts to body during pregnancy, delivery, and after, etc. But he's hurt and calling you names because you want an equal partnership and don't want your kids raised by strangers. Nice. Well, don't procreate with him for sure. I don't think his mom was trying to take a dig at you. That stuff comes up a lot in random conversations. For what it's worth, I'm a 44-year-old woman and child-free by choice. I raised my younger brothers, then my stepkids, and I just knew if I wanted kids of my own, I wanted to do it right like you're describing. And if I couldn't do that, I didn't want kids. I'm totally with you on this one. It's my favorite thing when people who are in their 40s, 50s or older are in the comments on Reddit being like, this is how what you're going through relates to something that I've already been through. For OP, like this sort of conflict is probably the first time that OP is experiencing this kind of conflict. But like in the grander scheme of everything, other people have had this experience before. I can't wait to be in my 40s. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, the confidence I'll feel. The other thing that I like that this other commenter pointed out is... The fantasy about parenthood that OP's partner is probably having, it doesn't make sense. OP is like, here are the logistics of raising kids. And there were no logistic counters. A counter that would have appeared to be coming from a more grounded place is pushing back on the stance around childcare. Having strangers raise your kid, not necessarily strangers, those people often end up feeling like family to the to the family you know but it doesn't seem like that's what's going on <laughs> so uh all you need to do is um have have a surrogate have your baby have a full-time nanny and a night nurse and then when the kids get old enough you send them to boarding school and in the summer you send them to sleepaway camp and then it's like you don't even have kids and uh and then you get to have like then you get to have cool adult children. Those are cool. You could drink with them. All right, moving on to another one. This one's from Am I the A-Hole? Am I the A-Hole for not letting my aunt live with me because she's child free? Growing up, my 23 female aunt, now 45 female, was child free in the sense that she actively didn't like children and would avoid coming to events that had children. My understanding of it, child free doesn't mean you don't like kids. <laughs> child free just means that you don't want to have children of your own. Most adults aren't like going to places where kids are just because they love kids so much. Like that would be weird. So, <laughs> and that's your definition of child free, then like most people are child free. Actively disliking children. I wouldn't call that being child free. I'd just say that she just doesn't like kids. She would tell my brother and I that children are dirty and scream and annoy everybody until they learn to act like adults, which I guess isn't wrong, but still hurtful for us to hear as elementary schoolers. <laughs> I guess there's a time and a place. I like how he's like, well, it's not wrong, <laughs> but I know when I hear about it. <laughs> the other thing to remember here is that she, it sounds like she doesn't spend a lot of time around children. Um, and so she probably doesn't know how to speak to children. What I found the worst about my aunt was how she used to talk about my mom, her older sister. My mom had been single since my dad abandoned us for his affair partner. I've overheard my aunt commenting that my mom's selfish for having children and promiscuous, and our dad probably isn't even our real dad, which is why he left my mom. When I was 10, I finally told my mom about these comments. She refused to keep us in the same room as our aunt, and we've really had no relationship with her. When I was 11, my aunt moved from the same neighborhood as my mom and grandparents to a house in the country about two hours away, and I had no real contact with her for the next seven years. When I was 18, my aunt started trying to reestablish a relationship with me, but I kept my contact with her low. I've been working for a few years and have saved enough to rent my own apartment. This year, my aunt was hit by a car and had a whole slew of health problems. Because of that, she's been needing to visit the hospital frequently and will need to start physical therapy. Her house is really far from most health facilities, and because she lives alone, she hasn't got anybody to take her back and forth every day. She doesn't have the money to buy a new house in a more convenient location, and she doesn't want to sell her current house because it has lots of land for her dogs and she wants to continue living there when she gets better. The rest of my family lives in the city and can access all sorts of health facilities much easier. My brother lives at college. My grandparents have moved in with my mom, who's still angry at my aunt and refuses to talk to her. That leaves me. 
Because I was hesitant and not outright rejecting contact with my aunt, she thinks she still has a chance to live with me. There are two major issues with this. My aunt has two dogs that she adores and I don't want to take care of them while she's still recovering. And I don't really like my aunt and don't want her living with me. I'm afraid that a relationship would cause a divide in the family. I'm also worried she'll find out things about me and gossip about it like she did with my mom. Fundamentally, if I had had a closer relationship with my aunt in my childhood, I might have considered it, but because of her justifying being cruel by her child freeness, I don't think I'm going to make this accommodation for her. I told her as much, and she called me an a-hole for abandoning her when she's vulnerable. My mom and brother support me, but my grandparents told me to just go along with it so that we can all stop fighting. Am I the a-hole? Yeah, this is, has nothing to do with her being child-free. Tangent. Tangent, because I'm irritated. Her aunt might be child-free because she didn't choose to have kids of her own. But that's different from being someone who gossips and starts drama. For her relationship with the family to be as fractured as it is... I think that it's not that this aunt is child-free, it's that this aunt is a mean person to most people she meets. That's a great reason to, like, not welcome her into your sanctuary, your home, and not only are dogs, like, a massive responsibility to take care of, but they can wreak havoc on your home as well. It makes sense to me. I don't think that you're the a-hole for saying no. I think that it's People can't just be mean to everyone and then expect everyone to, like, come to their rescue when, when they need something. Let's see what everybody else said. Not the a-hole. You should just tell her that people recovering from injuries are dirty and scream and annoy everybody until they can take care of themselves again. I don't like that. I don't like it. Listen, I love revenge as much as the next person. But OP can be like, I don't want to do this because we don't have a good relationship without being like, remember when you were cruel to me when I was five? Remember what you said at the dinner table? Like, she, honestly, she probably doesn't even remember that. And maybe she was expecting to have a better relationship with you when you were an adult. Another commenter says, this, or tell her, just like your child, oh, God. Yeah, there's like a there's like a little debate in the comment section around child freeness. Here's a piece of that. There are so many child free people who seem to treat kids like garbage. One thing they don't seem to realize is that one day they'll get old and they'll need help from someone younger, unless they're incredibly wealthy, I guess. The thing is, they don't deserve that help. This is vicious. This is vicious. We're going to get through it and then we're going to go over stuff. The thing is, they don't deserve that help. They haven't earned it. Older people get sick, get dirty, and need more help. It's the circle of life. And they often rely on the help of all the kids they cared for to assist them in their old age. People have understood this for a long time. Your aunt should have thought about that before she was awful to all of you. Not wanting kids doesn't mean you can treat all kids badly. Seriously, just tell her no. Don't open the door to let someone like that in your house. So many issues with that. My first issue with this, so many child-free people seem to treat kids like garbage. What? <laughs> A lot of people who don't want to be in a position where they're caring for kids are still in positions where other people try to, like, trick them into babysitting for free. We've gone over that. If it was never something that you wanted, you're probably not going to show up to do that thing, it, like, with your best self. When I'm reading through different posts and things about people who are child-free, not all of them, of course, not all of them, but some of them, talk about their... Uh, struggles with mental health and then that leaves out another like large group of people who are who are child-free and are kind to kids there are a lot of people especially people who work with kids people who are nannies who are teachers who spend all day taking care of kids and are amazing in that job and are amazing with kids and then they go into their personal life and they they want a break not every child-free person but a lot of child-free people are polite and kind to children in the way that they are polite and kind with everyone else in their life i don't buy what this commenter is saying about child-free people the other thing that i take a big issue with is the assumption that if you take care of a child in their childhood, they owe you caretaking when you're older. There are a lot of cultures around the world where that is the social expectation. In North America, it's less common. Adults make choices to take care of their children. And if they don't take care of their child, they go to prison. <laughs> 
you weren't doing a favor by following the law, you know? So it doesn't make sense that a child would have to repay a favor because being taken care of as a child was never a favor in the first place. A response to that comment here is, I'm child-free and I don't treat them like garbage. So I know your comments weren't directed to me, but I need to say that even if I had children, I wouldn't have them just so I would have someone to take care of me when I'm old and failing. I'd drop everything for my parents if they needed me, but there was never the expectation that I would. They're making plans for their old age, and I don't believe they include me, regardless of if I would or not. Yeah, love that. Think, think, think. Love that. Yeah, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.